Hello. Welcome back. It's video tutorial number 39. Video to audio. More of the poke object. Um, this is where we left off in the last uh, tutorial and uh, what fun it was indeed. Um, very quickly now, I just wanted to uh, combine these together so you could see what you can do by combining an audio um, an audio video stream an audio matrix if you will with the video matrix so let's um let's uh, get a new object up here it's your patcher unlocked great then let's get the jit op object op hello jit op object and we're going to go at op and uh, plus space plus space plus space plus space plus space plus uh, you don't need the last space sorry didn't I, I was getting uh, over over excited there okay so here's our jit op uh, object and we can just hook this video up to the left inlet Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm just grabbing the bottom of the matrix, which isn't really that good. Let's uh, run that right up to the the actual production part of it, and uh, I'll just tell it to route this patch cord. And then from the JIT matrix, the other side of JIT ops. And then we can put another matrix, uh, patcher window, excuse me, down here. Oops, not four of them. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. And supposedly, they should be adding them together there. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things about JIT op, as we talked about before, is that you can change these uh, numbers. And I believe one way that you can do it is to use an attribute object. And another way that you can do it is to get a U menu. And the way I like to do it is just get the U menu from the help file because it's just easier. So here's our help file. and this um, isn't necessarily so useful here, but you'll notice that in this tab, uh, using multiple operators, oops, sorry, operators, we have all of these um, math uh, possibilities here. But in the, here we go, um, zooming in here. Um, this says prepend op, and then we can put all these U, men, U menu in here. We can also, um, why don't we just copy that? And we'll take it downstairs and downstairs or back to our, our plane of existence. And the nice thing is that they already, I'll copy it, but then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relock this patcher. Here's all the operators that you can use. Come on, stay clicked um, down here, and then it'll just keep changing each one. And I think that'll make for uh, some really nice video effects. So let's close that help file and get back over here and paste that and drag it down here. And let's connect this over to here. Now I can't help but notice that this ha we are we have four three pluses and they have four so I guess I'll go and add in another plus on ours just to using but what the heck maybe it'll be interesting and uh, I'm gonna just uh, zoom come on zoom out a little bit and uh, now. Um, 
you'll notice that we have, if I lock the patcher, we have all these possibilities on our own little thing here. So um, we can go with multiply, which mostly gives the picture. You know, we need this picture to be bigger, don't we? How can I rearrange this to get more space as usual? Lock, unlock. And we'll put this up here. Throw the prepend. Oops. Throw the prepend there. And now we have a little room for a patcher. A patcher window, excuse me. And if you have an old computer, like I do, at the moment at least, um, you'll start to notice that you're losing the ability to, um, to keep this many windows open. So sometimes it helps to make these smaller. So you can just kind of get an idea of what's going on, but maybe it won't use up all of your, all of your video mess and a multiply. Um, I'm assuming that since we're broadcasting on the red channel, that if we change, whoops, got to lock the patcher, and I'll even zoom on this because we're not really looking at anything else. Um, if we change the red channel, that's where we'll get the nice stuff. Modulo? Modulo doesn't really, well, Modulo turns the whole thing red. I can't even guess how that happened. No. Uh -huh. You can just never tell. And remember, uh, this is, uh, This is all just sound signal. You'd think you could get a, uh, a difference here. There we go. I knew it could happen. So you've got different possibilities. I don't know what. Oh, I see. So since green is just a, this is just putting a cover of green by subtracting green out of the out of the video. So anyway, you've got lots and lots of effect possibilities here with the JIT, um, JIT op, which I've hidden somewhere over here. There it is. A oscilloscope is running backwards because I noticed that if I put a negative number in here, that it literally ran the phaser backwards. So it counts down from 320, well, it counts from one to zero. Um, and then it occurred to me that I could, if I wanted to, take one of these bangs and, well, I'll just show you what my plan is here. Um, just uh, going to unlock my patcher. And what we'll do, because we want to be able to turn this off, I'm going to make a new object, and it's a gate. Gate? Gate with a toggle. Okay. And what that gate is going to do is um, allow a message, allow this number to be multiplied by negative one. So another object and uh, we're going to say multiply space negative one and that way we know that we can turn that number around backwards to negative and there we go now the tricky part is that we have to manage to get this number 
and store it somewhere where you can bang it without banging it into the phaser until we want to. And the time that we want to bang it into the phaser is right when this thing clears the screen. Then we want to bang in a negative number and have the whole thing run backwards. But as soon as it turns around backwards, then if it can multiply by a negative number again, it'll go forward and it'll get stuck in a loop. So, um, I'm going to make a message, and uh, that message is going to get banged out to this gate. And this is what's going to do the banging. However, what I don't want is this number to turn negative and positive and then negative and positive too rapidly. So what I'm going to do is put a special kind of delay in the system called a pipe and delay it by 20 milliseconds, which should be long enough to let the thing start going the other direction without interrupting it. And so if we take the out okay unlock your patcher and put in this I've never zoomed this far before and there it is after the one put a decimal point that's what's wiping it all out there we go and we will unzoom from our super duper zoom there and now Man, all mayhem's breaking loose here. Okay. So, we'll run this up to... Oops, got a locker patcher here. 1.7. And, indeed, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to turn off the green so it's more visible in red. Which, of course, did nothing. There we go. Now we can see the red. But you can see now the numbers turning negative to positive, negative to positive. This thing's banging the number through the gate, multiplying it by the negative 1.0, going around and resetting the numbers, running in palindrome mode. And um, I'd also point out that we can um, increase the uh, luminosity, or at least the, uh, the range of that number, um, by turning this up or down we get a slightly finer line and then if we want to we can take this to a whole oh that's why we really need this toggle to shut this off because you can't turn it up or down when it's so here we go how about 25 times a second and we'll see what the we'll see what it looks like then. It's a much faster, sleeker line. Easy to see over here in this little one. Not so easy here. Um, let's see what we can. Are those moments when you start wondering. Oh, that's why. No? Yes? Let's turn that down so we can get a nice, slow look at it again. 
there's that big solid red thing coming across there and we'd like a I'm just going to turn these all to pass until I can get whichever one is red to work. I would say that seems to be red. There we go. So, um, at op and your forwards, backwards palindrome oscilloscope. And I will see you next time. It's been fun.